Hi there, welcome back to the Dutch RC channel for part two of my reverse swept wing project, um, also known as uh, f uh, forward swept wing. There are a few uh, turns to uh, address this, these kinds of planes. Now I should start this video by uh, thanking everybody that uh, replied to my uh, to my video and to my uh, topics in uh, on several uh, international uh, websites. I got a lot of response. Uh, I actually stirred up quite a uh, a discussion about these uh, these kinds of wings. And uh, once again, thank you very much for uh, all the input. Uh, some uh, replies were very lengthy and detailed and um, yeah th that'll certainly help me out and in this video you will uh, probably see a few things uh, resulting from that. Um, I hope my drawing here is uh, visible at all. Um, as you can see hopefully uh, I have uh, laid out the design for my wing on a piece of uh, foam board. Um, let's see, what, where should I start? Oh yeah, the, the first uh, thing I did was I made a very small uh, hand glider and this wing has the same dimensions or, or the same uh, angles uh, not the same dimensions of course, but the same angles as the wing that I will be building. Uh, you will probably be able to tell that uh, well, the, the forward sweep is the same as in my design. Um, I had actually planned to build several of these to see what works and what doesn't. This is the first one I built and this one uh, immediately flew quite well. Uh, glides quite well. Um, yeah, it, it is of course <clears throat> very difficult on uh, on this scale to get the CG right, really fiddly. But uh, once again, this one uh, glides pretty well um, until <laughs> and this was really funny until I beveled the f the the leading edge of the wings. There's a bevel on here. And after I did that, it didn't glide anymore. Yeah. Um, well, doesn't really matter. I just wanted to see if it would glide better with the bevel. Obviously, it didn't. But without the bevel, this this design, yeah, it, it glides pretty well. So I'm confident uh, that uh, the the full size version uh, will at least be able to fly. And um, my sweep is pretty aggressive, as you can see. Um, let's see, the, the entire board you see here is one meter in width and 70 centimeters in uh, height. Um, let's see, my uh, tip cord over here, this. The tip cord is 15 centimeters. And this, the base cord, is 40, 40 centimeters and it has a sweep of 30. So this line over here, the sweep or negative sweep, is 30 centimeters. Um, now I would have wanted to do an update on this project uh, sooner. But I struggled quite a bit with the design of my uh, elevators, uh, elevons and or uh, ailerons. And um, as you can see there are quite a few lines over here uh, for uh, different thoughts on how to shape them. Um, I have now bit the bullet though. Um, let's see. Um, first thing. Uh, Initially I wanted to do only elevons, so this one and this one, and have those act as elevators and ailerons. Um, on, a, on a normal plane you'd think that uh, an aileron in this part of the plane would not work very well. 
Yeah. Um, I do think still that they could work very well since the airflow over a reversed swept wing is quite different from a normal flying wing. In a normal flying wing, if this would be the, the front of the plane, the airflow would flow outwards uh, more to the tips of the plane. So not straight over the wing from front to back, but it will be pushed slightly outwards, uh, which on a normal, normal wing uh, would, uh, would lead you to have ailerons over here. Uh, pretty conventional. On a reverse swept wing like mine, however, the airflow, this is now the front of the plane, uh, the airflow will be um, have a tendency to flow inwards. So there will be more air pressure in the center of the plane than on the tips of the plane. Um, and my theory was that that would lead the uh, ailerons being uh, near the center of the plane to be effective uh, regardless of their position. Uh, does that make sense? Regardless of their position? Despite their position. Um, yeah. However, um, as you can see I have decided to put in ailerons as well. This part over here, this part over here. Those will be ailerons and uh, these will be the elevators. Uh, one uh, reason for that is that I want the elevators to only uh, have a, uh, a shallow deflection, so not move as much, because a uh, forward swept wing is pretty pitchy. And I want the ailerons to be uh, have a substantially more deflection. And that, of course, would be hard to combine in one uh, in elephants. I could do that with uh, the mixing uh, and uh, uh, dual rates in my transmitter, but somehow that didn't feel right. So I didn't. Okay, um, there are a lot of lines over here. From what you see here, you, it uh, might not be clear how the uh, elevators and uh, ailerons will be shaped. Um, you see this line over here. This was my original hinge line. This. But that uh, is uh, approximately at a 45 degree angle to the flight direction. Uh, this is the flight direction, right? The air will be flowing this way, a little in much, but mostly this way. And the hinge line of my elevators and ailerons is almost at a 45 degree angled angle to that. Uh, so uh, the ailerons will be, uh, and the elevators will be deflected inwards a little. Does that make sense? If some of my uh, thing, in, of the things I uh, tell you now do not make sense. Uh, just tell me uh, in the description of the video or in uh, topics on forums. Um, I'll uh, try to explain. So once again, uh, I didn't want the uh, hinge line of my ele uh, elevators and ailerons to be at this steep an angle to the airflow. So I moved the hinge line to here. This will be the hinge line of my elevators. It isn't a huge difference, but let me guess what the angle now is. 35 I think. Maybe a, a little less even. And uh, as you can see you will have these, these protrusions, something. Uh, the elevators protrude uh, out of the, the, the main shape of the wing and the ailerons as well. Um, yeah, with the hinge line being here, uh, I, I have to do that, otherwise you would be left with no elevator at this spot. And well, it makes for a, an interesting design as well, I think. I'm sure this will look quite <laughs> funky in the air. 
Um, what more should I tell you? Oh yeah, um, a lot of people uh, told me uh, to put the motor in at the front of the plane and that is almost a no-brainer. Um, with the motor at the back it's very difficult to, to have the CG correct. Um, I'm not sure where the CG is, I have calculated it, but um, it might be around here. So in this plane, this, here the, the CG would be uh, situated approximately. And that would be very hard to achieve if here on this spot would be a motor. Uh, there's no way to compensate for all that weight of the motor somewhere else. I'd have to, uh, to have the LiPo over here and over there at the, at the other tip. That's super impractical. So the plane will have a nose. I have not determined how long a nose, but it will have a nose and with a motor at the front. And uh, then I can put the LiPo like over here maybe and uh, much more, uh, e much easier to get the CG right then. Um, yeah, that'll also uh, enable me to put a rudder at at the end over here, of course, with the motor not being here. Um, yeah, the next thing is uh, to uh, cut it out, of course. I will be putting a KF2 airfoil on it. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, do the cutting and stuff uh, off camera. Um, if you have uh, requests about uh, me showing particular things, um, most of my building techniques I have already showed in previous builds. But once again, if you have requests on me showing particular uh, parts of the build, uh, please let me know and I will try to fit that into the videos. For now, thank you very much for watching and hope to see you back in another video. Bye bye.